Jerry Adams. Gerard Adams, born October 6, 1948, is an Irish Republican politician who was the leader of the Sinn Féin political party between November 13, 1983 and 10 February 2018, and has been a teach to Dalla, TD, for Louth since the 2011 general election. From 1983 to 1992 and from 1997 to 2011, he was an abstentionist member of Parliament, MP, of the British Parliament for the Belfast West constituency. In 1984, Adams was seriously wounded in an assassination attempt by several gunmen from the Ulster Defence Association, UDA, including John Gregg. From the late 1980s onwards, Adams was an important figure in the Northern Ireland peace process, initially following contact by the then Social Democratic and Labour Party, SDLP leader John Hume and then subsequently with the Irish and British governments. Under Adams, Sinn Féin changed its traditional policy of abstentionism towards the Erectus, the Parliament of the Republic of Ireland, in 1986 and later took seats in the power-sharing Northern Ireland Assembly. In 2005, the Provisional Irish Republican Army, IRA, stated that its armed campaign was over and that it was exclusively committed to democratic politics. In 2014, he was held for four days by the Police Service of Northern Ireland for questioning in connection with the abduction and murder of Jean McConville in 1972. He was freed without charge and a file was sent to the Public Prosecution Service, which later stated there was insufficient evidence to charge him, as had been expected since shortly after his release. Adams announced in November 2017 that he would step down as leader of Sinn Féin in 2018, and that he would not stand for re-election to his seat in the Dale in the next election. He was succeeded as leader of Sinn Féin by Mary Lou MacDonald at a special Art Heiss party conference, on February 10, 2018. Adams was born in Belfast, Northern Ireland. His parents, Anne, Hannaway, and Jerry Adams, Sr., came from Republican backgrounds. His grandfather, also named Jerry Adams, was a member of the Irish Republican Brotherhood, IRB, during the Irish War of Independence. Two of Adams's uncles, Dominic and Patrick Adams, had been interned by the governments in Belfast and Dublin. J. Boyer Bell states in his book, The Secret Army, that Dominic Adams was a senior figure in the IRA of the mid-1940s. Jerry Adams Sr. joined the IRA at age 16. In 1942, he participated in an IRA ambush on a Royal Ulster Constabulary, RUC, patrol but was himself shot, arrested and sentenced to eight years imprisonment. Adams's maternal great-grandfather, Michael Hannaway, was also a member of the IRB during its dynamiting campaign in England in the 1860s and 1870s. Michael's son, Billy, was election agent for Eamon de Valera at the Irish general election, 1918 in West Belfast. Adams attended St. Finian's Primary School on the Falls Road, where he was taught by La Salle brothers. Having passed the 11-plus exam in 1960, he attended St. Mary's Christian Brothers Grammar School. He left St. Mary's with six O-levels and became a barman. He was increasingly involved in the Irish Republican movement, joining Sinn Féin and Fianna Aran in 1964, after being radicalized by the Diva Street riots during that year's general election campaign. In 1971, Adams married Colette McCardell, with whom he has one son, Geroid, born 1973 who has played Gaelic football for Antrim GAA senior men's team and was its assistant manager in 2012. In the late 1960s, a civil rights campaign developed in Northern Ireland. Adams was an active supporter and joined the Northern Ireland Civil Rights Association in 1967. However, the civil rights movement was met with violence from loyalist counter-demonstrations and the Royal Ulster Constabulary. In August 1969, Northern Ireland cities like Belfast and Derry erupted in major rioting. British troops were called in at the request of the Government of Northern Ireland, see 1969 Northern Ireland riots. Adams was active in rioting at this time and later became involved in the Republican movement. In August 1971, Internment was reintroduced to Northern Ireland under the Special Powers Act 1922. Adams was interned in March 1972, on, but on the provisional IRA's insistence was released in June to take part in secret, but abortive talks in London. The IRA negotiated a short-lived truce with the British government and an IRA delegation met with British Home Secretary William Whitelaw at Chain Walk in Chelsea. The delegation included Adams, Martin McGuinness, Sean Max Diophane, IRA Chief of Staff, Tahio Canale, 
Seamus Toomey, Ivor Bell and Dublin solicitor Miles Shevlin. Adams was re-arrested in July 1973 and interned at the Longcash internment camp. After taking part in an IRA-organized escape attempt, he was sentenced to a period of imprisonment. During this time, he wrote articles in the paper in Foblacht under the byline Brownie, where he criticized the strategy and policy of Sinn Féin President Ruri Obrade and IRA Belfast OC Billy McKee. He was also highly critical of a decision taken by McKee to assassinate members of the rival official IRA who had been on ceasefire since 1972. After his release in 1976, Adams was again arrested in 1978 for alleged IRA membership, the charges were subsequently dismissed. During the 1981 hunger strike, which saw the emergence of his party as a political force, Adams played an important policy-making role. In 1983, he was elected president of Sinn Féin and became the first Sinn Féin MP elected to the British House of Commons since Phil Clark and Tom Mitchell in the mid-1950s. Following his election as MP for Belfast West, the British government lifted a ban on his travelling to Great Britain. In line with Sinn Féin policy, he refused to take his seat in the House of Commons. Sinn Féin retains a policy of abstentionism towards the Westminster Parliament, but since 2002, has received allowances for staff and takes up offices in the House of Commons. On March 14, 1984 in central Belfast, Adams was seriously wounded in an assassination attempt when several Ulster Defence Association, UDA, gunmen fired about 20 shots into the car in which he was travelling. He was hit in the neck, shoulder and arm. He was rushed to the Royal Victoria Hospital, where he underwent surgery to remove three bullets. John Gregg and his team were apprehended almost immediately by a British Army patrol that opened ed fire on them before ramming their car. The attack had been known in advance by security forces due to a tip-off from informants within Rathcool. Adams and his co-passengers had survived in part because Royal Ulster Constabulary officers, acting on the informants' information, had replaced much of the ammunition in the Utah's Rathcool weapons dump with low-velocity bullets. An Ulster Defence Regiment NCO subsequently received the Queen's Gallantry Medal for Chase and Gand arresting an assailant. Adams has stated repeatedly that he has never been a member of the Provisional Irish Republican Army, IRA. However, authors such as Ed Maloney, Peter Taylor, Mark Herbin and historian Richard English have all named Adams as part of the IRA leadership since the 1970s. Adams has denied Maloney's claims, calling them libelous. At a dinner for his Fine Gael party on September 29, 2012, Taoiseach Edna Kenny accused Adams of having not only been a member of the IRA, but a member of the IRA Army Council, calling for Adams to be absolutely truthful about this in response to Adams' calls for a Truth and Reconciliation Commission in Northern Ireland. Former IRA member, and Irish government intelligence agent, Sean O'Callaghan claimed he was at an IRA Army Council meeting in 1983 at which Adams was present. O'Callaghan gave his account and testimony to the High Court in Dublin. Former IRA members Anthony McIntyre and Richard Ora have claimed Adams was a key figure in the IRA. Adams said, I'm very, very clear about my denial of IRA membership, but I don't disassociate myself from the IRA. Former IRA member Peter Rogers has alleged that Adams and Martin McGuinness ordered Rogers to transport explosives to Great Britain in 1980, allegations Sinn Féin said were untrue. Rogers was jailed for the 1980 killing of Detective Garda Seamus Quaid in the Republic of Ireland, and was later released under the terms of the Good Friday Agreement. Father Jerry Reynolds, who facilitated secret meetings between SDLP leader John Hume and Adams, has said that asking Adams about his IRA membership is a stupid question as the IRA was a secret society and the raison d'etre of the secret society is that it is secret. Adams described Father Reynolds as a champion of the peace process upon his death. In 2003, using parliamentary privilege, Democratic Unionist Party MP Iris Robinson claimed that Adams was involved in the IRA's 1978 La Mon restaurant bombing. Adams denied the allegation and said the remarks were made to deflect attention away from developments in the Stevens inquiry into collusion. Former Belfast IRA commander Brendan Hughes named Adams as ordering the murder and secret burial of Jean McConville in 1972. McConville was one of the 16 disappeared who were abducted and killed by Irish Republican paramilitaries during the Troubles. Former Republican prisoner Evelyn Gilroy, who was resident in the Davis neighborhood from which McConville was abducted, stated that Adams was the only person in a position to authorize her murder by the provisional IRA in the district of West Belfast at that time.
Among the abductors of McConville was Dollars Price, who has claimed that she did so on the orders of Adams. Hughes and Price also claimed that Adams was involved in approving IRA bomb attacks in London in the early 1970s. Adams subsequently denied Hughes and Price's allegations, stating that they were untrue and motivated by the accuser's antagonism towards him for the role that he had played in bringing the provisional IRA's paramilitary campaign to a conclusion in the early 1990s, which they disagreed with, and seeking to damage his subsequent political career. He also referred to them as having been calling him a traitor in Irish Republican circles, calling for his death, and being in league with other Irish paramilitary splinter groups who opposed the Northern Ireland peace process. Former Garda Detective Superintendent P.J. Brown has claimed that Adams was the leader of the psychotic IRA unit in Belfast in the early 1970s. In 1978, Jerry Adams became joint vice president of Sinn Féin and a key figure in directing a challenge to the Sinn Féin leadership of President Ruri O'Brady and joint vice president Dahi O'Connell. The 1975 IRA British truce is often viewed as the event that began the challenge to the original provisional Sinn Féin leadership, which was dominated by Southerners like O'Brady and O'Connell. One of the reasons that the provisional IRA and provisional Sinn Féin were founded, in December 1969 and January 1970, respectively, was that people like O'Brady, O'Connell and McKee opposed participation in constitutional politics. The other reason was the failure of the Cahill Goulding leadership to provide for the defense of Irish nationalist areas during the 1969 Northern Ireland riots. When, at the December 1969 IRA convention and the January 1970 Sinn Féin Art Pice, the delegates voted to participate in the Dublin, Leinster House, Belfast, Stormont, and London, Westminster, parliaments, the organization split. Adams, who had joined the Republican movement in the early 1960s, sided with the provisionals. In Long Kesh in the mid-1970s, writing under the pseudonym Brownie in Republican News, Adams called for increased political activity among Republicans, especially at local level. The call resonated with younger Northern people, many of whom had been active in the provisional IRA but few of whom had been active in Sinn Féin. In 1977, Adams and Danny Morrison drafted the address of Jimmy Drum at the annual Wolf Tone commemoration at Bowdenstown. The address was viewed as watershed in that Drum acknowledged that the war would be a long one and that success depended on political activity that would complement the IRA's armed campaign. For some, this wedding of politics and armed struggle culminated in Danny Morrison's statement at the 1981 Sinn Féin Art in which he asked to hear really believes we can win the war through the ballot box? But will anyone hear object if, with a ballot paper in one hand and the armor light in the other, we take power in Ireland? For others, however, the call to link political activity with armed struggle had already been defined in Sinn Féin policy and in the presidential addresses of Rory O'Braday, but this had not resonated with young Northerners. Even after the election of Bobby Sands as MP for Fermanagh South Tyrone, a part of the mass mobilization associated with the 1981 Irish hunger strike by Republican prisoners in the H blocks of the Mays Prison, known as Long Cash by Republicans, Adams was cautious that the level of political involvement by Sinn Féin could lead to electoral embarrassment. Charles Hockey, the Taoiseach of the Republic of Ireland, called an election for June 1981. At an Ard Chom Harrell meeting, Adams recommended that they contest only four constituencies which were in border counties. Instead, H. Block slash Armagh candidates contested nine constituencies and elected two TDs. This, along with the election of Sands, was a precursor to an electoral breakthrough in elections in 1982 to the 1982 Northern Ireland Assembly. Adams, Danny Morrison, Martin McGuinness, Jim McAllister, and Owen Caron were elected as abstentionists. The Social Democratic and Labour Party, SDLP, had announced before the election that it would not take any seats and so its 14 elected representatives also abstained from participating in the assembly and it was a failure. The 1982 election was followed by the 1983 Westminster election, in which Sinn Féin's vote increased and Jerry Adams was elected, as an abstentionist, as MP for Belfast West. It was in 1983 that Rory O'Brady resigned as president of Sinn Féin and was succeeded by Jerry Adams. Many Republicans had long claimed that the only legitimate Irish state was the Irish Republic declared in the Proclamation of the Republic of 1916. In their view, the legitimate government was the IRA Army Council, which had been vested with the authority of that republic in 1938, prior to the Second World War, by the last remaining anti-treaty deputies of the Second Doyle. 
In his 2005 speech to the Sinn Féin Art Fies in Dublin, Adams explicitly rejected this view. But we refuse to criminalize those who break the law in pursuit of legitimate political objectives. Sinn Féin is accused of recognizing the Army Council of the IRA as the legitimate government of this island. That is not the case. We do not believe that the Army Council is the government of Ireland. Such a government will only exist when all the people of this island elect it. Does Sinn Féin accept the institutions of this state as the legitimate institutions of this state? Of course we do. As a result of this non recognition, Sinn Féin had abstained from taking any of the seats they won in the British or Irish Parliament. At its 1986 Art Fies, Sinn Féin delegates passed a resolution to amend the rules and constitution that would allow its members to sit in the Dublin Parliament Leinster House. At this, Rurio Brade led a small walkout, just as he and Sean Max Diofain had done 16 years earlier with the creation of provisional Sinn Féin. This minority, which rejected dropping the policy of abstentionism, now distinguishes itself from provisional Sinn Féin by using the name Republican Sinn Féin, or Sinn Féin Poplatok, and maintains that they are the true Sinn Féin. Adams' leadership of Sinn Féin was supported by a northern-based cadre that included people like Danny Morrison and Martin McGuinness. Over time, Adams and others pointed to Republican electoral successes in the early and mid-1980s, when hunger strikers Bobby Sands and Kieran Doherty were re-elected to the British House of Commons and Doyle Aaron respectively, and they advocated that Sinn Féin become increasingly political and base its influence in electoral politics rather than paramilitarism. The electoral effects of this strategy were shown later by the election of Adams and McGuinness to the House of Commons. Adams's prominence as an Irish Republican leader was increased by the 1988-94 British broadcasting voice restrictions, which were imposed by British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher to starve the terrorist and the hijacker of the oxygen of publicity on which they depend. Thatcher was moved to act after BBC interviews of Martin McGuinness and Adams had been the focus of a row over an edition of After Dark, a proposed Channel 4 discussion program which in the event was never made. While the ban covered 11 Irish political parties and paramilitary organizations, in practice it mostly affected Sinn Féin, the most prominent of these bodies. A similar ban, known as Section 31, had been law in the Republic of Ireland since the 1970s. However, media outlets soon found ways around the bans. In the UK, this was initially by the use of subtitles, but later and more often by an actor reading words accompanied by video footage of the banned person speaking. Actors who voiced Adams included Stephen Rhea and Paula Loughran. This loophole could not be used in the Republic, as word-for-word -word broadcasts were not allowed. Instead, the banned speaker's words were summarized by the newsreader, over video of them speaking. These bands were lampooned in cartoons and satirical TV shows, such as Spitting Image, and in the day-to-day, -day, and were criticized by freedom of speech organizations and media personalities, including BBC Director General John Byrd and BBC Foreign Editor John Simpson. The Republic's ban was allowed to lapse in January 1994, and the British ban was lifted by Prime Minister John Major in September. Sinn Féin continued its policy of refusing to sit in the Westminster Parliament after Adams won the Belfast West constituency. He lost his seat to Joe Hendren of the Social Democratic and Labour Party, SDLP, in the 1992 general election, regaining it at the following 1997 election. Under Adams, Sinn Féin moved away from being a political voice of the provisional IRA to becoming a professionally organized political party in both Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. SDLP leader John Hume, MP, identified the possibility that a negotiated settlement might be possible and began secret talks with Adams in 1988. These discussions led to unofficial contacts with the British Northern Ireland office under the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, Peter Brook, and with the government of the Republic under Charles Hockey, although both governments maintained in public that they would not negotiate with terrorists. These talks provided the groundwork for what was later to be the Belfast Agreement preceded by the Milestone Downing Street Declaration and the Joint Framework document. These negotiations led to the IRA ceasefire in August 1994. Taoiseach Albert Reynolds, who had replaced Hockey and who had played a key role in the Hume-Adams dialogue through his special advisor Martin Manser, regarded the ceasefire as permanent. However, the slow pace of developments contributed in part to the wider, political difficulties of the British government of John Major. His consequent reliance on Ulster Unionist party votes in the House of Commons led to him agreeing with the UUP demand to exclude Sinn Féin from talks until the IRA had decommissioned. Sinn Féin's exclusion led the IRA to end its ceasefire and resume its campaign. 
Britain. After the United Kingdom general election, 1997, the new Labour government had a majority in the House of Commons and was not reliant on unionist votes. The subsequent dropping of the insistence led to another IRA ceasefire, as part of the negotiations strategy, which saw teams from the British and Irish governments, the UAP, the SDLP, Sinn Féin and representatives of loyalist paramilitary organizations, under the chairmanship of former United States Senator George Mitchell, produce the Belfast Agreement, also called the Good Friday Agreement as it was signed on Good Friday, 1998. Under the agreement, structures were created reflecting the Irish and British identities of the people of Ireland, creating a British-Irish Council and a Northern Ireland Legislative Assembly. Articles 2 and 3 of the Republic's Constitution, which claimed sovereignty over all of Ireland, were reworded, and a power-sharing executive committee was provided for. As part of their deal, Sinn Féin agreed to abandon its abstentionist policy regarding a six-county parliament, as a result taking seats in the new Stormont-based assembly and running the education and health and social services ministries in the power-sharing government. On August 15, 1998, Four months after the signing of the Good Friday Agreement, the real IRA exploded a car bomb in Oma, County Tyrone, killing 31 people and injuring 220, from many communities. Breaking with tradition, Adams said in reaction to the bombing I am totally horrified by this action. I condemn it without any equivocation whatsoever. Prior to this, Adams had maintained a policy of refusing to condemn IRA or their splinter group's actions. Opponents in Republican Sinn Féin accused Sinn Féin of selling out by agreeing to participate in what it called partitionist assemblies in the Republic in Northern Ireland. However, Adams insisted that the Belfast Agreement provided a mechanism to deliver a united Ireland by non-violent and constitutional means. When Sinn Féin came to nominate its two ministers to the Northern Ireland executive, for tactical reasons the party, like the SDLP and the DUP, chose not to include its leader among its ministers. When later the SDLP chose a new leader, it selected one of its ministers, Mark Durkin, who then opted to remain in the committee. Adams was re-elected to the Northern Ireland Assembly on March 8, 2007, and on March 26, 2007, he met with DUP leader Ian Paisley face-to-face -face for the first time. These talks led to the St. Andrews Agreement, which brought about the return of the power-sharing executive in Northern Ireland. In January 2009, Adams attended the United States presidential inauguration of Barack Obama as a guest of U.S. Congressman Richard Neal. On May 6, 2010, Adams was re-elected as MP for West Belfast, garnering 71.1% of the vote. In 2011, the Chancellor of the Exchequer appointed Adams to the British title of steward and bailiff of the Manor of Northstead to allow him to resign from the House of Commons and to stand for election to Doyle Aaron. Initially it was claimed by David Cameron that Adams had accepted the title but Downing Street has since apologized for this and Adams has publicly rejected title stating, I have had no truck whatsoever with these antiquated and quite bizarre aspects of the British parliamentary system. Officially, Adams held the title between January and April 2011. In 2011 he succeeded Gwyvin O'Quain as Sinn Féin parliamentary leader in Doyle Aaron. On May 19, 2015, while on an official royal trip to Ireland, Prince Charles shook Adam's hand in what was described as a highly symbolic gesture of reconciliation. The meeting, described as historic, took place in Galway. In 2010, Adams announced that he would be seeking election as a TD, member of Irish Parliament for the constituency of Louth at the 2011 Irish general election. He subsequently resigned his West Belfast Assembly seat on December 7, 2010. Following the announcement of the Irish general election, 2011, Adams wrote to the House of Commons to resign his seat. This was treated as an application for the position of Crown Steward and Bailiff of the Manor of Northstead, an office of profit under the Crown. The traditional method of leaving Westminster as plain resignation is not possible, and granted as such even though Adams had not explicitly made the request. He was elected to the Doyle, topping the Louth constituency poll with 15,072, 21.7%, first preference votes. In September 2017, Adams said he will allow his name to go forward for a one-year term as president of Sinn Féin at the November Arthais at which point Sinn Féin would begin a planned process of generational change, including, Adam's, own future intentions. This has resulted in speculation in the Irish and British media that Adams is preparing to stand down as party leader, and that he may run for President of Ireland in the next election. At the Ardfheis on 18 November, 
Adams was re-elected for another year as party president, but announced that he would step down at some point in 2018, and would not seek re-election as TD for Louth. Adams' leadership of Sinn Féin ended on February 10, 2018, with his stepping down, and the election of Mary Lou MacDonald as the party's new president. At 10.50 p.m. on July 13, 2018, a homemade bomb was thrown at Adams' home in West Belfast, damaging a car parked in his driveway. Adams escaped injury and claimed that his two grandchildren were standing in the driveway only 10 minutes before the blast. Another bomb was set off that same evening at the nearby home of former IRA volunteer and Sinn Féin official Bobby Story. In a press conference the following day, Adams said he thought the attacks were linked to the riots in Derry, and asked that those responsible come and sit down and give us the rationale for this action. In October 2013 Liam Adams, Jerry Adams' brother, was found guilty of 10 offenses, including rape and gross indecency committed against his daughter, Anya Tyrell. When the allegations of abuse were first made public in a 2009 UTV program, Jerry Adams subsequently alleged that his deceased father, Jerry Adams, Sr., had subjected family members to emotional, physical and sexual abuse. On November 27, 2013, Liam Adams was jailed for 16 years for raping and abusing his daughter. Following the conviction of Liam Adams, the Attorney General of Northern Ireland, John Larkin, has been asked to review a 2011 decision not to prosecute Jerry Adams over an allegation that he withheld information in connection with the case. The request for the review has been made by Northern Ireland's Director of Public Prosecutions, Barra McCrory. A statement from the DPP read, the Director of Public Prosecutions, Barra McCrory QC recognizes that there has been considerable public interest surrounding the decision not to prosecute Mr. Jerry Adams in October 2011 in relation to an allegation that he withheld information in connection with the Liam Adams case. While the director has confidence in the evidential decision taken by the PPS prior to his appointment, he has asked the Attorney General to independently review the matter. The Attorney General will be given full access to all materials that he considers necessary to complete this review. In a statement issued in response, Adams said, With hindsight there are things I could have done differently, but I'm not on trial here. My brother was on trial. Anya has been vindicated. There is a lot of healing that needs to be done. On April 30, 2014, Adams was arrested by detectives from the Police Service of Northern Ireland, PSNI, Serious Crime Branch, under the Terrorism Act 2000, in connection with the murder of Jean McConville in 1972. He had previously voluntarily arranged to be interviewed by police regarding the matter, and maintained he had no involvement. Fellow Sinn Féin politician Alex Maskey claimed that the timing of the arrest, three weeks into an election, was evidence of a political agenda, a negative agenda by the PSNI. Jean McConville's family had campaigned for the arrest of Adams over the murder. Jean McConville's son Michael said that his family did not think the arrest of Adams would ever happen, but were quite glad that the arrest took place. Adams was released without charge after four days in custody and it was decided to send a file to the Public Prosecution Service, which would decide if criminal charges should be brought. At a press conference after his release, Adams also criticized the timing of his arrest, while reiterating Sinn Féin's support for the PSNI and saying, the IRAI is gone. It is finished. Adams has denied that he had any involvement in the murder or was ever a member of the IRA, and has said the allegations against him came from enemies of the peace process. On September 29, 2015 the Public Prosecution Service announced Adams would not face charges, due to insufficient evidence, as had been expected ever since a BBC report dated May 6, 2014, two days after the BBC reported his release, which was widely repeated elsewhere. On May 1, 2016, Adams sparked controversy by tweeting watching Django Unchained a Bally Murphy nigger. The tweet was not well received and was deleted, with Adams apologizing for the use of nigger the next day at Sinn Féin's Connolly House headquarter in Belfast. Adams's use of the slur in the tweet was widely reported in Irish, British and American media. Adams stood over the tweet stating, I stand over the context and main point of my tweet, which were the parallels between people and struggle. Like African Americans, Irish nationalists were denied basic rights. I have long been inspired by Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, who stood up for themselves and for justice. On May 4, 2016 Adams reiterated his apology for the use of nigger, but he appeared to double down on the use by saying, the whole thing was to make a political point, if I had left that word out would the tweet have gotten any attention? He also stated, 
I was paralleling the experiences of the Irish, not just in recent times but through the penal days when the Irish were sold as slaves, through the Cromwellian period, and that 50,000 Irish were shipped as slaves to Barbados between 1652 and 1659. The historical accuracy of these comments has been questioned by historians and met with a backlash in theme media. Jerry Adams has been portrayed in a number of films, TV programs, and books. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.